Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today is Leah Thomas. She is a swimmer on the Penn Women's Swim Team. Leah, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. to sit down and talk with you about your journey uh, through swimming um, and, and through transitioning into becoming a woman. Um, first of all, can you take us through that transition period for you? Um, why it was the right time when you decided to start that transition and what that process looked like for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I started my transition period in May of 2019. Um, that's when I started hormone replacement therapy, which is the medical transition for trans people. For trans women, it's a combination of estrogen and um, testosterone blockers, um, which basically gives you uh, female puberty um, and you see fat re- redistribution. Um, muscle loss, facial changes, all that. Um, and so I started that in May, 2019. Um, I'd first realized I was trans, um, the summer before in 2018, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty. I didn't know what I would be able to do, if I would be able to keep swimming. And so I decided to swim out the 2018, 2019 year on the men's team as a man without coming out. And that caused a lot of distress to me. I was struggling, you know, mental, my mental health was not very good. It was a lot of unease um, about basically just feeling trapped in my body. Like it, it didn't align. Um, And so after a year of that, I decided I wouldn't, it was just not working out and I wasn't able to focus on swimming or school or friendships as much as I wanted to. And so I I decided it was was time to come out and begin my transition and start everything. And so I, I came out then to my entire team um, early in the fall of 2019. And I then loved swimming and wanted to keep swimming. Um, And so that 2019, 2020 school year, I was in a very awkward phase where I was on the men's team, but transitioning to a woman basically. and as, and, a, as a quick side, was this yeah. your junior season? Yes, this was my junior year. So 1920 junior season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I you know, continued to train um, and then competed as much as I felt comfortable, but being in the sort of early stages of transition, it was a very awkward experience of basically being a woman competing in a men's meet um, was uncomfortable. And so I, I didn't compete that much. Um, and then in the summer of 2020, after I had completed my one year of testosterone replaced, or sorry, testosterone suppression under um, HRT following the NCAA guidelines, I submitted all of my medical work that I had been collecting for the past year of hormone tests and medical notes from my doctor and sent all that into the NCAA. And 
they approved everything and I was clear to compete on the women's team. Um, but then with COVID happening, um, the Ivy League and Penn canceled the swimming season. And so in that late summer, there was a lot of uncertainty about what the NCAA would do regarding eligibility. And I decided I didn't want to take any risks with um, my last year of eligibility, especially given how important it, it is to me to be able to compete and swim as my authentic self. So I took the past year, um, the 20, 2020, 2021 school year off. I didn't do classes or swim. I just took the year off to save the eligibility. And then that brings us to this year where I'm back enrolled in school and swimming on the women's team and competing after a little bit over two and a half years of uh, hormone replacement therapy and feeling good and ready to swim. Were you training during that 2020, 2021 season at all? Were you in the pool? Um, very on and off. It was very difficult to find consistent access to, um, to pools and for long enough stretches of time to like get real workouts in, you know, I could get, I could reserve a, a YMCA pool for an hour, but it was just very, it was very inconsistent and very difficult to keep up intense training. Yeah. Uh, so on that topic of intense training, when, when you started the, um, the hormone therapy, um, the testosterone reduction, can you tell me about how the effects you felt in the pool from that and, and what training was like, you know, through, through 19, through 20, um, and mm -hmm. even now, and especially if, if you're still, um, in hormone therapy or testosterone reduction currently. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I continue to take estrogen and spironolactone, the testosterone blocker mm -hmm. as part of a daily medicine routine to, you know, continue with transitioning as it's an ongoing process that doesn't have there's no like there's no clear endpoint of um a medical transition um and so i continue to take those and it's been a very interesting experience swimming and training um while taking hrt as i've experienced a lot of muscle loss and strength loss and you know getting back in the water at the beginning of the year and just struggling to be anywhere close to where i was previously is is very interesting and so i have to like readjust my goals and what i think of as a good time or a good pace to hold in practice as times and paces I held in practice and in meets before I'm often nowhere close to um, now. And so it's, it was a weird adjustment and a lot of just kind of unknown and comparing day by day where I'd go times in practice and my coach would be like, well, it was way off what you used to do, but for now, I, I think it's good. And so <laughs> there's just, and so over time it's gotten easier as I have been on eight hormones for longer. I have more sort of times to compare it to rather than comparing everything to pre-transition times, which don't, aren't really accurate to, I guess, my current uh, ability yeah, that sounds like quite the process. It's, uh, <laughs> um, so how have you grappled, come to terms with, with times generally um, for both training and racing? Um, do you feel like you've found a, a, an answer or, or goals to set um, 
because the the because of that difference that you just mm-hmm. spoke on? Um, in terms of goals, um, it's sort of just you know pre coming out and pre transition. There was a lot of I had a lot of uncertainty about my future in swimming and whether or not I'd be able to keep swimming at at all. And so I'm just thrilled to be able to continue to swim and I love to compete and I just love to see how fast I can go. And it's sort of an ongoing evolution of what I think I can go based on how my training sort of progresses and, and evolves. Uh, you, you did break Penn school records on the women's side. What can you describe what that sensation was like for you? Um, you know, especially after officially being on the women's team and I'm guessing, you know, just feeling in a good place with your transition. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very proud of my times and um, my ability to keep swimming and continue competing. And, you know, they're suited up times and I'm happy with them. My coaches are happy with them. And that's what matters to me. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the team, speaking of your coaches, you know, you mentioned you came out to them fall of 2019. Um, can you, can you describe their reaction to that initial coming out or the initial discussion you had with them and then, um, their, their reaction throughout this last two years and this journey with Mm you? Yeah. Um, the team has been unbelievably supportive since the beginning you know, teammates and coaches as well. Um, Mike has been one of my biggest supporters and allies in this process since day one. And I'm very grateful to have that support from him and from, from everybody on the team. I feel very supportive, just treated like any other member of the women's team. And, uh, you know, and, and with that, with switching, you know, men's to women's team with this transition as a whole, um, have there been unexpected complications in the pool outside the pool that have come up for you, um, that, <laughs> that you've had to deal with? Um, outside the pool, there haven't been too many complications. Um, I've had, a lot of help from coaches and the rest of the staff and the athletic departments um, in terms of navigating the um, NCAA bureaucracy and getting everything submitted. And it's, it was sort of a somewhat slow process, but gets just sort of given how bureaucracy is, but that all went pretty smoothly. And, you know, we, my coaches and I talked extensively to be as prepared as possible. So we've been nothing. We haven't been caught um, too off guard by anything yet, which, which is good. Sort of on the flip side of that, have there been, you know, complications that you expected, um, (laughs) that you know, maybe, maybe someone else going through this process could Mm -hmm. learn a thing or two from. Mm -hmm. Um. Complications I expected. I, we expected there would be some measure of pushback by people. Um, quite to the extent it has blown up, we weren't fully expecting, um, but we were expecting that. Um, we expected I would my speed and strength and endurance would drop um, significantly and have adjusted for that. Um, 
Yeah, I think those are some of the expected things we we've been able to account for. Yeah. Um, just in terms of, of pushback that you've received, um, how do you feel like, or, or what do you feel like the keys are f- for you to keep moving forward and, um, staying authentic to yourself and you, this journey and what you're trying to accomplish? Um, yeah, I just, I just don't engage with it. Um, it's not healthy for me to, to read it and engage with it at all. And so I don't, and that's, that's all I'll say on that. Okay. Um, so just in term, a little more on the broad side, in terms of just swimming, um, where does swimming fit into this process? Just in terms of your relationship with swimming before your transition or before you even realized this was something that you wanted to do and and how has it helped you through this process? So I've been swimming and in the water since I was five years old. And so it's been just a huge part of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, And, you know, in realizing and accepting the fact that I was trans, that sort of sense of certainty and comfort that swimming had always given me was sort of thrown um, into question. And so that was a very difficult experience, but in continuing to swim uh, after transitioning has been an incredibly rewarding experience as I can continue to do the sport I love as my authentic self and that experience in swimming um, and basically being in a swimsuit 20 hours a week um, has sort of helped me um, with accepting my body as it is and being proud and comfortable in my body and in who I am. I do feel like that that is one thing that swimming gives a lot of swimmers, right? Yeah. Is, uh, it is, you know, when you spend that much time in a swimsuit, you just kind of becomes the norm. <laughs> yeah. You just become much more comfortable. Right? <laughs> um, so that's, that, that's really great to hear. It's really great to hear <laughs> that, that swim stories, however, they may differ a lot. A lot of them can, you know, have a lot of continuity. Um, within mm-hmm. all of them and within yeah. the swimming community. Um, do you, from going to training from the men's team to the women's team, I went to a pen practice <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it seemed like the men and women swim together a lot of the time. Um, mm-hmm. Do, do the kind of sets you do or the training you do, obviously we talked about the times, but um, just do the sets or do the personnel have, has that changed too much for you? Um, it really hasn't, you know, Penn's a combined program. And so we have the same coaching staff for both teams. And so, um, Mike has taken the distance group for many years. And so that's been able to been very consistent as the distance group, both men and women, um, train together at the same time, most days, um, and so my training group hasn't really changed too drastically either. So there's been good consistency there, which has helped sort of figure out um, how times work now. Certainly seems helpful <laughs> on the training end. Um, and so then on, on the competition end, um, you've been competing, as you said, you went through NCAA, you went through all the compliance um, and you know you are now competing as a woman in the NCAA. Um, through in going through this process, um, do you have an opinion, or has this formed how you feel, um, or, or what you think standards should look like for a trans woman competing in female athletics? Yeah, I do have some thoughts. I so I don't know if you're familiar, but the IOC recently released um, a new set of guidelines for um inclusion on 
transgender and intersex athletes. And I think the guidelines they set forward are very good and do a very good job of promoting inclusivity while keeping um, competitional integrity um, going where the IOC guidelines are that anyone, each sport basically has to come up with um, eligibility criteria for what constitutes an unfair advantage in that given sport. Um, and then everybody is able to compete um, in the category they're most comfortable with unless there's a proven unfair advantage that they have. Um, and this does a very good job of including trans women and not invading anybody's privacy or making anyone feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I think they, those guidelines are, are very good. Do you know if, if swimming specifically does that fall under uh, the, the USOPC, USA Swimming, the FINA, to, to make the swimming guidelines for that? Um, I don't know um, off the top of my head. This, the guidelines are very um, recent um, change, so I don't know what, what USA Swimming has done yet, but those are the new IOC guidelines, and I think they do a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, again, in terms of NCAA, did you feel like everything you were asked to do was, was reasonable or did, you know, did that form, <laughs> did that form an opinion on just throughout that process? Did you feel like you were treated fairly equally? I do. I think that was fair. Um, Stancia has a one year, um, of testosterone suppression rule. And I submitted, um, my blood work that I had gotten over the years and it was submitted and accepted without issue and all went very well. And so that's that. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, I think it was, I felt very fair to me and was not um, too invasive or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, so let's go to present day. Um, just just where you're at with with this transition how you're feeling about your swimming within this transition and also just outside of the pool with where you're at as a human i'm in a overall very good spot in my life i'd say it's been a lot of struggles you know in the sort of 12 months prior to coming out to everybody to the sort of initial awkwardness and um, sort of uncertainty of initially starting transitioning where there just seems to be so much to do and you have to take care of. And it just seems like this mountain, but you get by it day by day and you build confidence each day. And I'm feeling confident and good in my swimming and, and all my personal relationships and transitioning has allowed me to, to be more confident in all of those aspects of my life where I was struggling a lot before, before I came out. You might've just answered this, but, you know, to, to wrap things up, um, as, as a parting thought, um, is there a message you'd like to send to other humans to other athletes who are in a similar situation and having a hard time navigating what the right path is for them? Yeah. My biggest, um, I guess message for other trans athletes is just to know you're not alone and there are other people going through what you're going. And I was helped greatly by a couple of trans athletes who were a few years older than me and I in being you know a visible and um trans athlete want to pass that sort of visibility forward to the 
the younger trans athletes and let them know that they're not alone and um, they can continue to do the sport that they love and be authentic to who they are. Okay. Quick follow-up. I didn't, uh-huh. I didn't realize this, you know, you, you mentioned you were helped by a few or a couple older trans athletes. Um, mm-hmm. can, you, can you speak just to in what ways they, they guided you through that? Yeah. Um, I can say my biggest, um, help was Skylar Baylor, um, from Harvard and, you know, being also in the Ivy league, um, I was able to sort of talk with him and, um, you know, him being a few years older than me and having gone through it sort of had experience to help me in going through my journey and, and giving me advice and, and his wisdom. That is a really great message to hear and, and to know that there, there, there are other trans athletes out there, mm-hmm. um, and that the network is open. Um, well, Leah, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat yeah. with me today any any other parting thoughts before we <laughs> sign off um no i i think that's that's all i had um but thank you for for inviting me on it's been a pleasure you've been listening to the swim swam podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform look for links in the description below And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.